Hi guys, Stephen here, back with another video. Um, this time it's going to be on, it's going to be on this whole uh, Triple H NXT situation. Um, you know, this week there's the this whole, you know, there's this whole, obviously this whole uproar with all the, you know, the, there's, you know, more releases uh, and, you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of people who are, you know, unhappy with this, a lot of people who are upset with this. A lot of, you know, fans, a lot of WWE fans, a lot of wrestling fans, you know, a lot of uh, people in the business, you know, of our talent, they're, they're, they're upset. And I'm just going to give you my give you my thoughts and give you my opinions on this whole thing. Um, my opinions are probably going to be a little bit different from what's out there, what you could maybe call popular. I'm probably more of a, a contrarian with my views, you know. I'm, I, I'm not just going to jump on the bandwagon, you know. I'm, I, I like to think for myself. But I mean, you've got the whole, you know, the, the NXT, you know, releases some, you know, the main ones really, you know, you have William Regal, you have Samoa Joe. Um, you know, William Regal has kind of been like Triple H's right hand man for quite some time now. Um, William Regal goes way back, you know, w w this goes back to, you know, the WCW days, you know, with William Regal and Triple H when they were a tag team. It was like some blue blood, blood gimmick. It was a gimmick, kind of, uh, it was similar to kind of the gimmick that Triple H went on to do the whole, you know, snob from Connecticut thing. Um, so, you know, they go back to the WCW days, and, and I believe, you know, they're probably very close. Maybe not necessarily like, close like best friends, but they're close. And, you know, they're, they're guys that are going to look out for one another, they're going to protect one another. Um, I mean, and, you know, you, so there's obviously, there's Regal, there's a guy like Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, I think it was in April, just after WrestleMania. It was literally just five days or so after he was, you know, on WrestleMania doing commentary. You know, he gets released. But about a month or two later, uh, Triple H, you know, pulls some strings and he makes sure that Samoa Joe can return to WWE and Samoa Joe does some stuff uh, in NXT. And Samoa Joe, I think, behind the scenes has been doing some stuff helping out with recruitment. Funny enough, he was helping out with recruitment alongside William Regal before they were, they've been fired, you know. And I think there was another guy, I think there was a Ryan Katz. He was a writer that was brought in, I think it was around 2013, 2014 time. I know that because I remember him. He was the host of uh, After Buzz TV. That's, the, I think, the, comp the part of the company that I think the, was it Maria Menounis owns? You know, she's obviously, there's connections there. She's a big wrestling fan. She's done some stuff with WWE. She's was in a match at rest was at WrestleMania 10 years ago. Um, and finally enough, Kathy Kelly was on that show as well. And finally enough, she was brought in. But, you know, about a year, was it a year ago, she she quit. Um, but, I mean, you know, you've got these people who are being fired now. And a lot of people have been fired this year. You're talking, I mean, a lot. And a lot of people, are, you know, are upset. And, and I can understand in many cases, pe rightly so, you know, people are upset that these people are being fired. I mean, some of them are, are just, you know, fly ridiculous, really, to me. I mean, when you think of people who have been let go, you think, you know, there's Bray Wyatt, there's Braun Strowman, there's, like, Keith Lee, there's guys like Karrion Cross, like, guys like Keith Lee and Karrion Cross who were, like, the main event at NXT last year, and who, guys who did have potential, you know, I do believe they have potential. I, but, I mean, I, but the thing is, I'm not a huge, like, NXT fan, I'm not, like, an NXT mark. But certain guys like that, though, like, you know, Cross and Lee definitely had potential. Um, but the thing is with me, though, I mean, you know, Triple H, he was in control of NXT since, what, has it been since, like, 2013? And the thing about NXT was, as time went on with NXT, it was pretty obvious that NXT, you know, it was a glorified indie fed, you know. <laughs> and let's be honest, you know, they were doing, they were have, having it, become like an indie fed because really they wanted to put all the other indie feds out of business like let's not kid ourselves you know they they want to put you know the ring of honors out of business and lo and behold it looks like now the ring of honor could be going out of business that they're going to be you know they're winding down they're shutting down so i think it's worked out for them hasn't it wdb don't you think and, and, and with this, you know, with what they were doing, you know, they bring in, you know, in the indie darlings, so to speak. They bring in people like Finn Balor. They bring in, you know, they brought in Kevin Owens. You know, he was Kevin Steen before in the indie scene. You know, and the thing is, though, with NXT, 
you know, it's supposed to be a developmental company. But what did they do? They brought veterans, people who were veterans in the business. They bring in, they brought in Samoa Joe. They brought in Bobby Roode, and they were work on NXT. But the thing is, you know, with NXT, you know, they had, oh, they still do, you know, they have a, like a diehard, you know, like a real diehard niche following, you know. You could say it's kind of like ECW in that respect. Um, you know, the fans are a lot different from the ECW fans, so, you know, they're not going to be chanting, you know, she's a crack whore or, you know, she has herpes, you know, none of that shit, you know. And I'm glad they don't, you know, that that's pretty, that's in bad taste, you know, but... The thing is, you know, they have they have these crowds, you know, it's a full sale university or wherever it is in Florida. And it's about 500 fans that each week would show up, to, that, that show up, you know. But 500 fans does not equate to this huge success. It's not like when Raw and SmackDown, and I know that they have a lot of empty seats when they go to these shows now. It's bad. I mean, I know it's bad, but it's not like selling out like 5,000 or 8,000 fans a week, like with a Raw or with a SmackDown. It's nothing like that. It's just 500 fans. So people get a bit too carried away with all this NXT stuff, really, in my opinion. But, you know, you had NXT and it did get bigger. Over the years, it got bigger. You know, I'll give them that. They, 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 it was very successful when they had, you know, the takeover shows. They had them in the bigger arenas. Um, it's not like I don't think they're, you know, they're selling out like the big WWE pay-per-views, but they still, they get a bigger crowd, um, you know, and they, they would have these, you know, takeover shows uh, that were, like, you know, like a day before the big, you know, the, 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 the WWE pay-per-views, you know, fine. And, you know, the thing is with, you know, when Triple H was in control of NXT, you know, you know I'll g- I can give them credit, you know, they've they've made a lot of stars, you know, they a lot of women stars, you know, you know, you, you have, sh- you had Charlotte, Becky Lynch, Bailey. Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, you know, Mandy Rose, they're all, they're, those are all examples right there of women, you know, with star power, you know, and now, you know, things have changed now, you, you know, there's the so-called, you know, women's, uh, had the women's revolution, evolution, whatever the hell you want to call it, which was around, you know, 2017 time, and women are higher up in the card making more money, which is fine, you know, I'm all for that, but then on the other hand, you know, with the, the NXT that, you know, Triple H was in control of, <laughs> there's not really been any big male stars. You know, y- you had Owens, you had Balor, you know, two guys, you know, who've had moderate success, you know. Okay, Owens has won the title once, the main title, you know, the universal title. Balor won it, and maybe he was going to have a longer r- run with it, but then, you know, he has the injury in the match with Rollins at SummerSlam, has to relinquish it. And Balor, you know, he hasn't really recovered, I think, since then, let's be honest, you know what I mean? And he's gone back to NXT and, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and then you've got Sami Zayn, who is like a mid-card comedy guy now, who I don't think is as funny as he think he's, thinks he is, but, what well, you know, he's okay-ish, you know what I mean? He, he can cut a decent promo every now and then, you know, but he's not a huge star. You know, Reigns, Ambrose, Rollins, guys like them, you know, they're stu- they were star they're stars. But that you know, they were in NXT though before Triple H was in control of it. You know, let's remember that.